Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. First off, I, on my Facebook page, I put out a thing asking for topics to talk about. <clears throat> and I had one whole person respond. So, congratulations, Chris F. This video is dedicated to you. And if you want to give me additional topics on which to speak, please put them below. Also, I'm going to make a separate video after this and talk a little bit about uh, projects that we're working on at the studio. And, yeah, yes, this is a V-neck. And uh, armies that I'm working on as well. And I'm trying to eliminate uh from my vocabulary. We'll uh, see if that actually works. Okay, Chris F. writes... In tabletop role-playing games, do you prefer high fantasy, low fantasy, or sword and sorcery more? Now, for the uninitiated, I'll say high fantasy is like your uh, traditional... Oh my gosh, what would be a good example of high fantasy? I could do this. Uh, okay, well, let's move on to low fantasy first. So low fantasy is like things are very low-tech. Magic is a, a bit unusual. It's more realistic. You might go on an adventure for a hundred gold or whatever it is. High fantasy is like out there. Like, um, I'm trying to think of it. There's got to be like a zillion examples of this. And, but it's like, it's more magic, magic weapons and magic items and stuff like that, and they're exploring unusual settings like uh, different planes of existence and stuff like that. And uh, Sword and Sorcery is old school, like um, like Conan the Barbarian, and um, like, well, I, I'm trying to, like Hyperborea is a setting for that, and uh, that's... Uh, that's all really cool. Well, here's the deal. My traditional campaigns are definitely high fantasy. I have tons of magic items. Everyone's overpowered. Uh, usually demigods are involved. And I really just, uh, I just take the brakes off and let the players have a lot of fun with what it is that they want to do. And after all, that's what a role-playing game is for. It's an escape from reality. You get to actually go into a communal fantasy world. And... However, in the last, I'd say, five or six years, I've really gone more for sword and sorcery. Uh, Cthulhu-esque survival horror type stuff. That's been very appealing to me. Uh, the barbarian tribes, uh, storm the temple, kill the priests, carry, carry off the, the fair maiden, whatever that is. Like Frank Frazetta type stuff. And that's a not for everybody, and I usually give, like, a heads up. I think when you're running a role-playing game, it's very important to tell the players ahead of time what sort of game that you're running. And I usually do that by saying, well, if you like this type of movie, then that's what this is going to be like. And then later you can't have complaints about, well, I didn't, you know, I don't want this or that. Uh, and so... Uh, consent, consent is important in all things. If two people agree to it, well, then it's then it's really, it's really, in most cases, is okay to go with that. Well, anyway, but recently I've realized, like I've just sort of like I've had my fill of my Cthulhu, Conan the Barbarian, um, Amazing Tales, Sword and Sorcery, Hyperborea type games, and I. And I'm going to move back more towards high fantasy, and really high fantasy. Uh, my custom setting that is based off of all my writings from the 80s and 90s, which I still have. Uh, I'm, I'm reworking those into a campaign book and a game system. And uh, the game system that I'm making is very, very easy to uh, go from 5th edition into what it is that I'm doing. And it's a, it's a six action based system. So during your turn you have six actions and certain actions cost more. And so like a quick action could cost just one and you could do six of those or you can, you can bank them for reactions. So you can say I end my turn, I still have two, so I'm gonna bank two reactions and you can use those for things too. And that's, that's sort of the, the action economy. And it's, it's interesting because you can't, 
get a fifth edition is really good. I've been playing it for a while now and actually learning how to do it. And with uh, actions, bonus actions, and reactions, which by the way correspond to three, two, and one actions in my system, that that really gives you a lot of granularity. However, it does create some problems because uh, because six, uh, excuse me, because to get action economy you have to be able to do each one of those during a round and so players have to find ways to make sure that they're getting the maximum amount of output from their character. Alright, and uh, so that's uh, my comment on that. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, and by the way, there's loads of hobby stuff going on around here. I should probably, I've, I've got my phone, so I should probably be putting that up on Instagram. Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my Instagram is like really active right now. And uh, my subscriber rate is just absolutely crawling. Um, you know, a lot of times, like I went, I go in now and actually look at who's subscribing. And it's like, a lot of times it's just butt models who want a follow back. And so that's, uh, that's slowing things down because... Uh, I'm not doing that. All right, what is your favorite movie? Uh, I have so many. And this is one of those things where if you, if you ask it, it's like, well, you can't, can't think of it offhand. Uh, one of my favorite movies. Oh, my gosh. What have I been watching recently? Hey, we should take a look at my Netflix history. Uh, okay, so offhand, uh, The Matrix. Uh, in general, I really love uh, science fiction movies and science fiction that asks a... Uh, that asks an actual question about, like, proposes some, like, well, what if this? And uh, I love, um, what's that called? Time loop movies. I'm a real time loop movie aficionado. I loved Palm Springs. I watched that one over and over again. And, all right. Uh, so, what else? Um, so, yeah, science fiction. Um, I do like romantic comedies, of all things. I really enjoy those. And of course, uh, with my lovely wife, it's really hard for us to find something that we both like. And uh, uh, so, wait, what do we both like? We both like Frasier. Uh, we've watched all 11 or whatever seasons of Frasier like five times together. Now, what else do we like? What, what do we watch together? Cooking shows. That's it. She's just giving me a look. Uh, and then uh, we started watching Ally McBeal. Which is, that's like, that's like going back to the 90s for sure. Um, okay, what else? But for me, definitely, definitely science fiction stuff. God, I'm like, I'm super curious now. Oh, wait, I can look this up on my phone. Star Trek. Uh, oh, first off, yeah, well, I watch a lot of Star Trek. That goes without saying. Uh, I'm, I watch Star Wars series. I watch Kenobi. Really loved it. The thing is, I'm really easy to please. And by the way, that's my problem in life. I'm a terrible judge of character. I, uh, because I see the good in people, because I see good in myself. So it's hard for me to imagine that other people are terrible or don't at least have the potential to be good. And the fact is, some people are terrible, and you've got you to gotta watch out for that. All right, so, oh, oh do I think the D&D &D movie will be good? Well, a la what I just said, yes, I do. I think that movies in general are getting better now. Like, look at comic book movies. Those used to be okay well, at first they were terrible, and then they were okay, and now they're like, they're really great. And sometimes I hear people bagging on the Marvel movies because there's a lot of them coming out. And I think just after what's happened in the last couple of years, or maybe in uh, our whole lifetime, there's just been, there's been all this terribleness. It's like, people are like, people don't want this big drama to like lay on this, this heavy line. And it's like, yeah, it's like enough of that. I'm, I'm going to the theater to just be entertained. And uh, the Marvel movies have definitely fit the bill for that and are, are just what the American public needs, I think. All right, uh, so any Marvel movie is a must-watch. I take the kids out to see it, and it's, uh, it's good times, and I don't, I don't think too hard about it. Uh, I, I'm not, I wouldn't make a good critic because... And I, I write restaurant reviews, too, like every time... And apparently on Google, mine are like, uh, a lot of people are reading them. So, uh, 
<clears throat> but I give 100% positive reviews, five stars every time. And if I really didn't like the place, I just won't say anything. And because, you know, it's, you got to be careful because uh, giving a bad review is like flicking a match out into someone's property. It's like, well, maybe nothing will happen, maybe, it, or maybe it'll just burn the whole place down. So you don't know, and I personally don't want to be responsible for that for somebody to, because you never know. Maybe uh, that wait person, uh, the, the, the wait staff, maybe that person was having a bad day. So just a little, a little milk of human kindness goes a long way, and I don't think it's good to, to uh, criticize somebody on the Internet, because the Internet is forever, isn't it? It just goes on. That, that if, you, if you're riding your skateboard and you face plant, that can be your whole life. And, and you see that with people like um, that, uh, what's that called, the clingy girlfriend girl? That just became her whole thing for life. And, uh, of course, you know, not always. So, hold on, I'm just, I wonder if I can see viewing history on Netflix here. Uh, let's see. Person, my list, account. Okay, hold on, I'm going to try and see my Netflix history. I can tell you things that I watched. Account. No, that's just something different. Huh, I can't, uh, I can't find history on here. All right, well, let's just go to continue watching. Uh, so here's on my continue watching for Netflix. Final Table, which is a cooking show. I watched that with uh, my lovely wife. Seinfeld. Eh. The Mist by Stephen King. I love uh, creature horror shows. Not always. Uh, Man vs. Bee. We managed to watch exactly two minutes of that. Because neither of us like Cat in the Hat movies, where like everything just gets messed up. It's like that's we're too organized for that. That's too that's too disturbing. Uh, Supergirl, so see your superhero series. Uh, Deep Space Nine, Inside Job, which is a, a a adult type cartoon about conspiracy theory, Men in Black type stuff. Uh, Great News, which is a Thirty Rock esque show that uh, I actually highly recommend. It's really, it's very clever. Uh, that, and that's something that my wife and I like to watch together. Real Rob is amazing. Multiple viewings of that one. Uh, let's see, what does it say? I don't know what that is. Sometimes my kids are on my thing. Or my, my kids have uh, bona fide accounts on there, so they... Um, they, I don't look up on, I don't look up on them, but uh, I, sometimes I've gone there um, uh, by accident to, and seen kind of like what it is they're, they're watching. Uh, 30 Rock, A Baking Show, Iron Shift, uh, Kim's Convenience, I love that. I love lighthearted things, like I don't want serious stuff, I don't want to see a lot of people getting hurt, sometimes, but not always. Uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, a documentary about uh, Mr. Rogers. Russian Doll, that is a, that's a time loop movie. I really enjoyed that one. Um, God's Favorite Idiot, uh, we watched a couple of those and didn't like it. Ultraman, awesome. Ah. I like anime, but I like uh, dub because usually I'm working and I can't like actually literally sit there and read it the whole time. Uh, not that I mind, I'm a good reader. I'm not illiterate. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, com different comedy shows. Stargate. I've watched the, all the Stargate SG-1 series multiple times. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Dark Matter is a good sci-fi. Um, Cowboy Bebop. I really enjoyed that. I never saw the anime, so I, I need to do both. I need to actually watch the anime and watch the live-action series. I like the live-action series, but of course I had never seen the anime, and that's really kind of where the complaints come from. Um... Let's see here. Oh, Pacific Rim. I'm a huge Pacific Rim fan. I can't get enough. Unfortunately, they're not on Netflix or Hulu or the basic ones. BoJack Horseman. Uh, what else? Dark Crystal. The Flash. That's, there's another comic book show. Uh, what else? Ghost in the Shell. Oh, I love Ghost in the Shell so hard. Everything, everything they've made for it. Please, put it on me. I love that. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, that was like a family thing. 
Uh, let's see. I'm skipping things where I just like watched like five minutes of it and, and didn't like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, quite a bit of them. <laughs> Bruise Brothers. That was horrible. Oh, that just hurt my soul to even watch that series. So bad. And of course, now you'll go see it and you'll be like, well, what's, what's all the deal? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of stuff where I just watch a little bit of it and don't like it. Um, all right, that's it. So I'm excited. I think uh, between the various different streaming services, you're now just getting you're getting so much content that uh, that you can't can't watch at all. And like YouTube, I think um, every hour, like ten thousand hours of content goes onto YouTube, and I'm just like ah. And we live such narrow lives, and COVID actually. I mean, it just sort of, it like, it broke everybody open and, like, whatever was inside came out. Uh, and I was just, I was surprised how different people's opinions are on different things. And you'll notice on my channel, on my YouTube channel, I opine uh, based on, you know, people asking me to talk about things. On my Facebook page, uh, man, I just do not get involved. Why? Because it's a new thing all the time. And my personal philosophy is you get more of what you concentrate on. So when I think about getting involved in that, speaking my mind on something like, well, Sean, do you, do you want more of this? And the answer is, no, I don't. I want to just live. I'm 53. I'm just living my life. I'm just, I'm taking a knee and letting the clock run out. Is what's, is what's happening. And I'm enjoying my, that's, I'm enjoying my life. That's the number one thing. Uh, my kids are still at the point where they want to spend time with me, which is a complete magic. And I say yes to that. And I'm having a good time with that, obviously. Uh, in my various, my various relationships are going very well. Lucky me. And, uh, and in terms of the business, I'm enjoying my clients. And I've changed my business model. There was one day where I got... I got a money order in the mail, and I was like, this is many years ago, and it was from a client, and I realized this client had done like 120 projects, and I was like, I want, who is this person? I never bothered to like communicate better, and, and I'm think I'm just like, life is better when it's small, when it's focused. Badger Hole was perfect. A tiny little windowless basement office. And by the way, the physical conditions could change for the better, for sure. It wasn't that there were no windows that made it great. It's that it was family-sized is what made, what made it great. I was there with Sarah, who was amazing. We just got along so good together. We're talking all day about different things in life. And, uh, and then I had Ren and Brig. We're doing assembly in the other room. We were just having fun. We got, it's lunchtime. Let's go out and get some Chinese. It was not complicated, and it was not expensive. It was just very, very, very simple, and having a really good time. Less is more, and so it's just my repeat customer rate is so high right now, and I know everybody, and so there's never, uh, well... Yeah, I'd say there's never a project that comes through where I don't understand the details about it. I mean, sure, I fumble once in a while, but, uh, but I pick it up and continue on. So it's, it's, been, it's been really good. And, and I've been lucky, too. I had a friend come in from out of town, and he's not a miniatures uh, gamer, but he's somebody that I knew since sixth grade. We've been roughly in touch the whole time. And... Uh, by the way, thanks to Facebook. And he said that he's been watching my channel this whole time, and he's like, Sean, you pioneered an industry. I'm like, wow, yeah. That's, I mean, not everybody gets to do that. It's, it's rare. So thanks. I really appreciate it. it. It was fun while it lasted. And I had uh, a really good time. And having a good time right now. And I, I appreciate the people on this channel. And that's, that's my objective. It's actually not bigger, but smaller, but more, 
more meaningful and it's really oh my gosh it's so fantastic I don't know how I got on that topic alright guys thanks for tuning in and now I'm going to make the video of talking a little bit about the armies that I'm making. I hope this is useful background noise to you. Uh, this is like, it's a little bit like a radio show, isn't it, honey? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to be involved with this. All right, off I go. Bye.